When I was interviewed for a job in the mid-1980s, I was asked if I believed that the history of women would necessarily remain a part of the academic curriculum. Or would the need for such courses gradually fade away because all other history courses would adjust their focus to accommodate the new subjects of study? This is much like Karen Hunt's story, uh, but much earlier than Joan Scott's um, work. In fact, it would have been about the year of publication for Women, Work, and Family. Uh, and indeed, the male interviewers uh, were of the same generation and same political persuasion as Karen's interviewer. Um, I thought back to that interview a lot, wondering at which point in the interview I had lost the job. I, I answered in the affirmative. Of course there would always be women's history because there would always be resistance to incorporating the new perspectives that women as subjects brought to any given subject. You couldn't simply add women and stir. Looking at women necessitated a fundamental change of focus and a different set of definitions and questions. We've gone over this already here this weekend. I didn't express these thoughts as fully or as easily as I needed to at the time. When I finished answering, the two men told me they disagreed with me. Historical methodology would gradually shift. I wish I could remember if either of them had said the word gender, and thus would render women's history redundant. Now, I have to confess that I, I went searching on the internet to see if the person who asked the question had retired, and in and looking for him, I found what came up first, but ratemyprofessor.com. And the first, this is, I know it's very unfair, but the first comment said this. He was not helpful, and he often grades down simply because he doesn't agree with you, although he is asking for your opinion. I didn't write that, I promise. So, anyway. Um, before discussing whether the interviewers were right or wrong, let's turn back another decade to the early to mid-70s when I was a college student and my interviewers had to have been graduate students. I think one of them was actually at the same institution. And this will sound a little bit like Susan's story, only about five or six years earlier. I was uh, at Radcliffe between 1971 and 1975. And as a history major, like several other people have said in this room, I never took a course with a woman professor, and certainly never a course about women. The one semester I might have taken a course with a woman would have been with Carolyn Bynum, but I chose not to. Um, it would have been a dense course called The Intellectual History of the Middle Ages, which was not within my interests at the time. Uh, and let's be clear, it was certainly not a course on women. Bynum would later be denied tenure at Harvard, which is worth remembering too, right? The only two female subjects I recall in the British history courses I took would have been Queen Elizabeth and Hannah Moore. The, <laughs> the latter was a true gift, as it turned out, part of a course on the social history of Britain taught by a visiting professor from Oxford, Brian Harrison. I remember that his lectures were of an odd formal sort, as though he were reading from the pages of a book. Whereas Wallace McCaffrey, teaching early modern Britain, had delivered all of his without notes as though he were recalling old times past in good <laughs> cheer. So Harrison's were as densely written as they were spoken on sheaves of lined paper. And I can rev vividly recall one particular day when he finished lecturing and he rushed down the aisle out of the room to the airport with his Mac tossed over his arm. He was going home, presumably to Britain an exotic place in my eyes, some place I had never been, and a highly exalted one in the halls of Harvard. I think this is worth pointing out, too, that British history used to be, uh, you know, at the center of, or at the top of a certain historical pyramid. I've often thought about writing Brian Harrison a thank you note, because uh, his syllabus for the first semester of the spring of 1974 included the making of the English working class. And after writing a paper for him on Richard Brothers, the prophet of the poor, I focused my senior thesis on popular millenarianism in the 1790s and got one of those nice little Radcliffe summer research grants, which women sometimes took to study pottery in Africa. But I went to Britain and looked in the manuscript room at the British Museum 
and um, encountered the correspondence of Joanna Southcott. Uh, and so began my footing, uh, I began to find my footing in uh, the subject of women's history in Britain. 